I don't know if these two have to come out, but might as well. I'm gonna set the lamp door out of the way. There we are. So now this back plate should come off. Yeah, it just pops right off. Because to clean it out well enough, I want to be able to get into here. Now this should come off. Yeah, look at that big pile of dust there. And I found the rest of the lamp sticker. That's part of it. Yeah, there's part of the old sticker. Now we need to disconnect wires. This is the ballast wire. In fact, let me get a better angle for you all. Like I said, this is the ballast wire. It controls the ballast. This is the front infrared sensor. This is for a fan, for this fan. This is color wheel drive that makes color wheel go. Let's see if I can slide that ribbon cable out. This is for the color wheel sensor. This tells the projector if the color wheel is spinning. Surprised that the uh, sensor inside there isn't clogged. Then we have another fan. I think this is for the lamp blower, the one that I'm really expecting to be dirty. And this is for the exhaust for that fan. And then right here, this goes to the speaker. The door switch right here cuts the main power. So there's no connector for the door switch. With all of this disconnected, we should be able to lift the main board up. There's a connector under here that connects it to the DLP board. That just comes straight up. Yeah, see, that's, that's disgusting. As I said, I've seen worse, but that's still pretty bad. We're getting into the meat of it now, though. This is where all the dirt's really going to be. So this bracket has to come out next. Screw down there. There's another one down here. Usually when I see this sort of setup, there are four screws. Yeah, there's one down here. But I think on this particular one, there are only three. Well, I guess four if you count the ground. Maybe that's what I'm remembering. I, I want to say on some, there's a small screw that'll go in over here sometimes. All right, and then when you bring it up, There are two pieces of metal that go down on the either side of that rear switch. So just kind of, or switch the plug, the plug receptacle. So kind of put your finger on there and lift that up so that these guys are clear. Then, as long as nothing is caught, like the color wheel sense wire, or the fan, or speaker wire, should come right off. Yeah, that needs some cleaning too. And now we are into the dust zone. This projector is quickly becoming one of the dirtiest I have ever seen, at least dust-wise. None of this is acceptable. Like this isn't this isn't remotely okay. If you have a projector that looks like this, it's bad. 
look at the uh, I'll get the power connector here look at all that and the vents this capacitor is covered that's where the AC comes in you can see that chunk that just fell off you can see what's really happening is this fan is just full crazy. Then the important fan, the fan that keeps the lamps alive, is this one right here. This guy, number gal, this, this fan has the issue, is, uh, has the issue of cleaning or keeping the uh, lamp cool. There is a temperature fuse mounted to it right here that if that gets too hot, It'll pop that resettable fuse and it will shut the whole projector down. Just kills the power to it. Looks like it wasn't far off from doing that. That fan is just totally clogged. It still rotates, so the RPM sensor won't trip it, but man, that's bad. All right, well, this needs a good cleaning. I will be right back. There we go little visit to the uh, cleaning area get the air compressor on it with some uh, high volume low pressure air you don't want to use too high pressure because you can knock optics out of position or you know it's force you're using force to remove dust so you want to make sure you don't get that force in the wrong place now I do want to check the ballast so I'm going to pop out the power supply for a moment. We'll disconnect the door switch. Just want to make sure there's make sure I got the dust out of here because if this overheats, that'll shut it down too. That goes out to the lamp. That's the lamp power right there. Oh, that should be in here, I think. Yeah. So let's put that cover back on because the ballast is fine. The issue with this is the uh, DLP chip itself. I have the new chip coming in Monday, I believe, Monday or Tuesday. Today's a Friday, so we won't be putting in the new one today. Today is purely disassembly and just verifying that everything's good to go with the repair. Now, I believe I can leave, put this fan back in. See, it's nice and clean now. All the blades are open in there. It'll actually move air out of here, which is good. If, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but where the plastic gets shiny, that's where this got too hot. This is, uh, PPS 40, I believe, glass fiber reinforced. So it takes a lot to get that hot. Looks good though. Yeah, I'm going to put this back in because to take out this optic assembly, this can still be in the projector. Let me put that screw back in the power supply too. All we have to have out to remove the DLP in the optic section is the main board and this assembly. So once we get that out, we can get to here. But let me put those uh, screws back in the fan. Ah, almost. And then we'll put this screw back in.
Oops. It's a little hard to get in there. I don't want to lose the screw. There we are. It's a little tough to get down in there. These do not seem to be magnetic. No, they are. I must have demagnetized my screwdriver at some point. It did get hot. Oops. Let's try that again. It's a little weird. Oh, the wire. Something was bumping the screwdriver out of position. There we are. So we'll get this guy in. There we are. And the fan is back in position. We should plug the thermal sensor back in because there's no reason to have that unplugged. Everything else is unplugged as it should be. The IR wire needs to be freed. Let's set that down here. And now we can take the optical assembly out. It's uh, it's pretty easy. One, two, three screws, and then that whole thing should just lift right out. So it looks like, oh, maybe it's. Oh, I took the color wheel screw out. I'm going to leave that in. I'm leave the color wheel attached. That's the screw I want. That one. And this one. And lastly, this one. Now, this should just lift out. Yep. And this is what we have to deal with. I should probably clean the color wheel manually. It's hard to get air in there. At least going to take it out so it doesn't get damaged. There's a color wheel. And it's a little dirty. Let's see, there's the index mark, a little black mark. And then the sensor's that little board right here. That's not too bad, actually. I'm just going to hit it with a little more air, and then we'll call it good. You don't want to get hit these with alcohol or anything if you can help it, because you might knock the glue loose or something. But let me put that somewhere safe. And then we have the integrator, also known as a light tunnel. Maybe you can see down in there, there's four mirrors that all face in on each other. They help... Uh, uh, collimate the beam. I don't know if that's the right term. Gets the beam, uh, you know, in a straight line. Here's one out of another projector that I scrapped down. It goes to a lens. Let's see if uh, this does anything. Oh, this way. There you go. So there's what the inside looks like. You can see those mirrored, those mirrored segments. Get my finger underneath. Yeah, there's my finger at the bottom. So let me try this way. Kaleidoscope. Neat. <laughs> anyway. That's the light tunnel. So now we need to take the heat sink off. Now we have to be a little careful here. There are 
our optics involved, so these springs to keep everything even. I'm going to do my best to just leave them sitting in the metal here so I don't get them out of order. It shouldn't matter if they go back into different holes, but sometimes I've had problems with the uh, tension not being right, so I try to leave them in the same place. And then there's the uh, heat sink connects to the back of the chip. There's the back of the chip. And then it's mounting board. So this whole thing should just come off now. Yeah, there we go. There's the, uh, oh wow, this one's really bad. You see all those little spots? That's not dust. That's inside. Those are mirrors that are stuck or broken or just non-responsive anymore. So that picture must have been awful. I can only imagine. And we'll deal with this guy. So I'll just have to wait for the one that I ordered to show up. Like I said, it should be here in a couple days, Monday. So that'll be part two. So there's the chip. Like I said, all those little speckles you see in there are mirrors that are stuck. I'm going to wipe off the top. So there's no dust, but each one of those little spots is a stuck mirror. If you want to see how one of these actually work, I'll put a link on uh, the description for another guy, Applied Science, who has a really good video on how a DLP chip works. And he has, a, I think, an electron microscope view of one, which is pretty cool. So this is the one that has to be changed. The uh, part number is in there, 1076-6139B. That's what needs to go in here. And it locks and unlocks the chip, just kind of like a CPU and a computer. So as soon as the new one arrives, we'll set it back in there. And then lock the new chip into place. And we'll reverse the process and put it all back together. So until part two, uh, do that like and subscription thing if you haven't already leave a comment if you have any questions about this and uh, aside from that thank you for watching